Thank you very much. Uh, before I start, could I just do a quick poll here? How many, how many people here are working in the mobile games industry? Awesome, awesome. I mean, this presentation is supposed to be, in general, mo uh, mobile app monetization with ads. But I mean, obviously, we are very games focused. So we're only games focused, actually. So it will be very much built on you know, our experiences in that field. Um, but um, mobile games app monetization. Basically, um, what I wanted to talk about, just quickly, just a quick intro who we are. So I'm, I'm Johan, I'm the general manager for Chartboost uh, in Europe. And I um, just want to show quickly who we are, Chartboost, just to show, give you guys a bit of a sense of, of um, you know, what do we know and, and how, who do we work with and where do we, where we learn from, basically. Um, and if we talk about short boosts, we see ourselves as a marketplace for mobile games developers. And marketplace meaning then three pieces, basically, which is, first of all, cross-promotion, which is, is uh, a way if you have two different games, you can cross-promote users, you can do free ads, basically, to the other game, right? This is something we offer for free. Uh, second piece is direct deals, where you do the same thing, but with external parties. So we facilitate you to do direct deals and do advertising with another game developer uh, without a cost. And then the third part is our bread and butter, which is the network, which is an ad network. You know, you show an ad, you make money, you advertise with an ad, and you pay us, and we pay the publisher. And we take a 30% cut. Um, so we are, we like to call ourselves built by developers for developers. I'm sure you never heard <laughs> that phrase before, used in other contexts, right? Uh, but in, in this case, it's actually true. We, uh, the founders originated we, from uh, Tap Tap Revenge, which was acquired by Disney. And basically, they saw in the market, they saw that, okay, all these ad networks are a bit, uh, well, let's put it shady, uh, a little bit difficult to deal with and not transparent. So they wanted to create the kind of ad network that they would love to represent, right? So that's kind of, that's how Chartwood started. Uh, that was five years ago, and we've grown to become the biggest mobile games only ad network or marketplace in the world. And we work basically with every big game developer out there. And of course, we work with North Current, you know, here from Vilnius. It's a fantastic company. Um, and um, in essence, we're integrating 300,000 games, 40 billion game sessions, and uh, about a billion people individuals see our ads every month. Um, we're backed by Sequoia, we have a team of 150 people in San Francisco, and we have our European headquarter in Amsterdam and uh, Asian headquarter in Tokyo. So that's, and, and just, just this is my final slide, I promise, on, on Chartboost. Uh, but I just want to show you how big we are, just to give you a sense of, okay, we know our stuff kind of thing. Uh, we are the third biggest, uh, we have the third highest penetration of any SDK in the app stores. So if you look at the, the, um, the Apple App Store, only Apple's own SDK and Facebook SDK has a higher penetration in mobile games than we do. And the same goes for, for, uh, for uh, uh, Android, when then Google instead of Apple. So um, based on this, I want to share my experiences now with different ad formats. Um, that you can use in mobile games and also other apps. And this is where, I mean, this is, again, this is mobile games app focused. It's not mobile web, it's not other types, but it's, this is what I've seen that's working well in, in this market. Um, so basically, if you look at ad monetization, I want to talk about, first, just to put into kind of a, a basic kind of rule of thumb what you should think about when you do ad monetization. And then I want to show the different formats and kind of how this place in and what's good and bad and what, what has a high payout and what doesn't. Um, first of all, you know, if you can, try to make the ad come natural in the gameplay. And this sounds probably difficult because no one really wants to see ads, but it's actually, it's actually quite important. And there are very many different ad formats and many time, different type of games. So, you know, different ads fit in different games and at different times, right? Secondly, uh, try not to be intrusive. It's, uh, again, ads can be nice to see, but mostly people don't want to see it. And it's always a trade-off, okay, how much money do you want to make and how much do you want your, your, your partner, your, your, your players to stick, right? So the less intrusive you are, the higher your in, in, you know, retention, which means that you, know, you keep your users so you don't have to acquire new users, which is really expensive, I think, as we all know. Um, third part is that an ad can actually be part of the discovery process. So if you discover things within the game, you, you, you could make the ad uh, 
natural place in there as well. And thirdly, um, we, I touched on this again, but it's really adapt the ad or use the ad that fits the game, basically. So, if we take this into account, I want to show you seven different ad formats. And I'm going to use two different... Um, in this graph, I want to talk about two different things. First one is CPM on the y-axis, uh, which is the money you make. CPM stands for cost per mill, so that's uh, or revenue per mill. You can call it RPM as well. It's basically what you make for showing a thousand impressions. This is your money, basically. On the x-axis, you have my very subjective um, thoughts about the different ad formats in terms of user experience. Some ads are super intrusive, not very nice. Other ads are super nice for a user, right? So this very non-scientific line on the x-axis is just, this is what I think about these ads, right? Um, and the, the CPM is actually based on real data. But I don't, I'm not going to share the data, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you, you know, how they compare to each other. So first off, we have an ad format called the mobile banner. Um, this is basically a remnant from, from the web, from desktop web. And desktop web became mobile web, and banner ads became banner ads on mobile, and then it found its way into the mobile native as well. Honestly, I wouldn't recommend this ad format to anyone. It's highly intrusive, it takes up a bit of the screen, and it doesn't even pay that well. Um, at Sharpus, we don't even offer this ad format. We don't use it. So, poor user experience, poor CPM. Some games, yes, okay, fine, it could work, it could be fine, but uh, yeah, I call th this, is, this is the lowest of the ads, basically. The second one is the, the interstitial, and this is actually something that can be made, I, I'll come to the back to this later, but this is actually something that can be made pretty well into the game, can flow well with the game, and it pays pretty well. I mean, it pays decently, so this is like the, the most common ad format today. The next step, the next generation of these interstitials is the, uh, the animated GIF, which is an interstitial, but it has some cinematic. It's an animated GIF, basically, and it it's has some cinematic experience so that you can use experiences better and you can show a bit more of the game. And it pays so, so the engagement will be better, which means it pays better. Right? Um, fourth one is the video, and this is an ad format that really exploded last year and still continue to grow. This is, of the most common ad formats, this is by far the best one. Pays really well, and the user experience is actually pretty good. People actually like to see them at least a lot of times. The next generation of video ads is what we call Video 2.0, which is basically when you bring in the web browser into the app, which allows you to do a lot of interactive stuff also, also with video. So basically you can choose, I'll show this later, but you can basically choose what video to look at and you can also take in information directly from the App Store into the ad. Uh, ratings, for instance, is one that's really, really good to show on an ad if you have good ratings in the App Store. Uh, next one is, uh, is something that has been in the web for a while, but it's just coming now to, to mobile, uh, mobile native. Uh, it's playable ads. This is something that works really well sometimes. In some games, in some games, promoting some games. So the, I'll, I'll show you an example of this also. It could be a very nice experience and it can pay really well, but it really, really depends. And it's something we're testing quite a lot right now as well. Um, and lastly, I, I think this is the highest user experience. This is a native ad. So this is basically an ad that's built into the game. It's really nice, usually really nice user experience. The problem with this though is that it's really hard to monetize well. So on, on essence, it pays doesn't pay that well, but it has a really nice user experience. So if you want to start with ads, and you don't want to, you, you're really careful about user experience, then this native is probably a good way to go, to start, just to get a sense of what kind of money you can make. Um, so if we go into everyone individually, again, this is the mobile banner. Summarize, low CPM, it's intrusive, it's annoying, and I mean, in this case here, when it's placed, at the bottom, where you basically a lot of times want to have your fingers, the point of this ad could actually be to have missed clicks and that kind of stuff. Um, so poor user experience, and also if you use this through Google, they will pen penalize you for, for uh, accidental clicks. So, um, and it takes up game space. So again, I'm not going to talk too much about this. I really don't like this one. Uh, <laughs> Second one, this is chart with bread and butter, by the way. This is this, and a very, very common one. This is actually an ad from North Current that is being shown in, in Fruit Ninja. And what we've done here is we created a frame for Fruit Ninja, 
or for the developer for it in, yeah? So that when I show an ad, it actually looks like it's still in the game. You see that the, the, the frame is actually made uh, with you know real assets from Fruit Ninja, so you you see this between the two different levels, and you know it's an ad, but it still looks like it's part of the game. So it, it's it, it has a little bit more natural feeling to the game, and it's still a very visible ad. It's very still very you know clear what you're gonna do. You know you're gonna download Cooking Fever for Not Current. That's what you're gonna do here. So it pays well. Click through rates and install rates are, are are good with this, but it it looks a bit nicer, right? And you can place it well within the game to come natural. Um, so, and then again, the next kind of generation of this is the animated GIFs. Again, we put it in a frame between levels, but as you see, it moves a little bit, right? You can, you can actually, with this, you can make it a little bit more interesting, as with this guy that gets stabbed by a zombie. You can also show your gameplay a little bit. Right? You only get a few frames, you get like a couple of seconds, but you can do something with it, right? Um, which means that, that the engagement will be higher. You know, pe more people will click on it, and when they come to the App Store, they know more what they're going to get, so they're going to install it, with a higher, uh, uh, higher probability of install it. And if the click-through rate is high and the install rate is high, then your CPM will be high, so you will make more money. So this is better paying app, uh, ad format, basically. And the retention for the advertiser should also be higher, since the user will know a little bit more what the ad is actually uh, so the game is actually about, so they was more likely to stay in the game. Another cool thing with this is also that it, this is a relatively new ad format, so for a user, they actually find this cool sometimes that they see these things, and they may actually not be bothered so much with it. Um, next generation, sorry, next ad, uh, video ads. Again, this is a really good format. I can highly recommend it. If you never tried video, please do. Um, Two things with this. First of all, it can be very entertaining. This is Mobile Strike, for instance, with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, it's a fun video. You actually, I actually enjoy watch, watching it, so it doesn't bother me to watch it in the game. Second thing with this, this video ads is that you can make them rewarded as well. So you can reward users to watch the ad, right? This is nothing new. It's been around for a long time, but it works really well. So if you have coins you want to give to users for spending 15 to 30 seconds of the time just watching your ad, uh, that's, that's actually quite appreciated a lot of times. Um, so this has a high conversion, it's really good for advertisers, and you make good money if you publish and you show these ads, right? So it's a very good ad format. Um, and again, this, the, the, the third bullet here is really important also. This, now this ad doesn't do it so much, but you have the opportunity to really show your gameplay. You can actually spend those 15, 30 seconds on just showing the game, how it's played. And in that case, People that do click on it, are, they know exactly what they're going to get. And that's, that's key a lot of times. So when they come to the App Store, they will download it. And once they have downloaded it, they will stay in the game. Which means you will make more money. And the advertiser will have a better uh, retention, which means that they can actually bid less for the ads. They, they have, it's a better experience for them, too. So again, really good ad format. And this one is even better. Um, this is called. This is what we call uh, video 2.0. I'm going to show you now how this works. But basically, what just to explain a bit before, the user here is going to be able to ch to actually choose which ad to see, right? So he can be able to swipe between different ads, and he picks the one that looks interesting, and that's the one he's going to see. And then you also see that there's information here about the App Store rankings. Dragon Veil here has five stars, and that's really, really good to show if you're an advertiser because it, it, it makes the user really interested in seeing this. So again, 2.0, we use this with the, we're using the web view within the app, which gives all these opportunities to, to work with HTML5 and, and make the ad much more interactive. So I hope this, let's see how this works. So you see here, here the, the user can swipe, and then the ad starts, right? That information comes up, directly pulled you know, immediately from the App Store. So this is a this is an even better solution in terms of video. And just to give you a little bit of perspective on this, so Sharp was we're pushing our new SDK right now, 6.4. Uh, and we're actually giving a 10% bonus to any publisher who integrates the new SDK. Uh, on, any on any video revenue they make until end of July. Uh, just 20% bonus, because that's how much we, we want this <laughs> in all the games. Because it works so much better. And if it works better for you, it works better for us. So that's, um, this is a really cool development, actually. Uh, next one I want to show. And let me 
first explain this one, and then I'll, we have a test actually on the on the iPad. Uh, I want to show you how it works. This is a playable ad. And again, this is something that works sometimes for some games, but it's really you have a chance to actually play the game within the ad. So if you are interested in the game and you, you can try it out a little bit and you actually you know, click on it to get to the App Store, then your likelihood of downloading is very, very high and your likelihood of liking the game, because you already know it, is also very, very high. And it's entertaining to do. So when right, this is an amazing ad format. But it's also not right for all games that you know games that presented it, it's also not right for all advertisers so when right it has a really high payout and really high user experience but you know it's it's still kind of if you want to do this it's kind of a testing mood still so uh, pass code please that's okay cool uh, let's see Can you see it? I think so. There we go. Okay, so now I'm, I'm playing here on the uh, on this tablet, and basically I, this is the, the the ad that I see. I can skip it as well, as you can see in the, in the bottom right corner, but I don't. So basically here now I'm playing this game. This is called Fishdom. It's from a, a developer called Playrix. Um, so I play this game a couple of times. You know, I see this. Uh, this is something I love. Match the games. This is my favorite. I, you know, and and I play it, and I will get rewarded once I download the game. Um, so I have a couple more moves, and there it prompts me to download the game. Press it, and it takes me to the App Store. Right? Again, this is something we're experimenting with quite a lot right now. Um, and it works really well sometimes. So if you're interested in this, look us up. We'll probably make you a free uh, sample just to test. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see. But this is also this is also the interesting thing with this and the kind of the development of ad, you know, native ad industry in general is that this is enabled with a web browser. So when we actually pull the web browser into native, it enables you to use HTML5. Uh, programming for making ads basically so it's not just a static or a video anymore but it's actually interactive ads and the cool things about this is that you can update this in real time so if you put this in there you can do all types of, of the normal type of game optimization that you used to do right testing different colors testing different you know should this have you know be three turns or seven turns or whatever I mean those kind of iterations you can also do with this ad it also makes it you know very easy for you to to bring up the CPMs um, in real life without updates or anything like that. Lastly, the last format I want to talk about is native ads. And again, user experience of these ads are really good. It's really high. It's hard to get paid well though. That's, the, that's basically the essence of these native ads. If you look at this green example here, this is in, in Cut the Rope. Um, and what they have basically is they have a more games button. So you play the game, you click on you, you. You are interested in other games. So you click on more games, right? So this is something that you want to do as a user. Then you come to this, and here you can actually choose a lot of different games. You can swipe between different games. So you see here, you see Clash of Clans. Okay, I'm not interested. I'm going to swipe, swipe something else, and then you find your game. Again, this is something user initiated, something that the user really want to do, and then they click on it, and they get taken to the to the app store. So once a person actually click on it, it's great, but getting them to click on it is difficult. So, which means that CTRs are going to be low. You're going to get a lot of impressions, but you're not going to get that many that click on it. Which means that your CPM is going to be low. Um, another example, of course, is that you have a racing game and you race through by next to a billboard of Coca-Cola. That's another type of native advertising, right? Easy to get eyeballs, but it's difficult to get engagement. Well, difficult to get them to download the apps. You can get engagement. So, I think that's it. Um, so, to summarize, Again, CPM versus user experience. You have the awful uh, mobile banner. You have the interstitial. You have the animated GIF. You have the video, which is awesome. You have the video 2.0, which is awesomer. You have the playable ad, which is great sometimes. And you have the native, which is awesome user experience, but difficult to make money. Thank you. Any questions I can answer?
Uh, would you say native ads, like for example with, with the billboard, right? That seems something that's perfect for brands to advertise on. Like, yes. You know, driving GTA, Coca-Cola, or burgers, or anything like that. Is, I mean, do you see uh, companies interested in that, like real companies, uh, well, I mean, companies that make real world products? Yeah. Um, did, did everyone hear the question or you want me to repeat it? Okay, so the question, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the question is basically if, if you look at native ads, um, then this seems to be something that is great for brand advertising. Basically when you get eyeballs, you don't necessarily need to engage in it, but you want to see the brand, right? And, you know, then the question is, are the brands really interested in this, right? And the answer is yes, the brands are interested in this. There are two major parts of brand advertising, I would say. First of all is the Coca-Cola, the, 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 the eyeball, right? And the second one is the, the video. Like, uh, you want to promote the new Game of Thrones, for instance. So you put it as a video advertising in the game as well. The, they are very interested in this. The challenge is that you need to find them, right? You need to work through agencies, basically, um, to get them into your game. Um, or we need to work with agencies, Chartpus. So you know, if you have Chartpus integrated, uh, then we make deals with Coca-Cola, we make deals with other brand advertisers uh, to do this. And that's, it's, it's a longer process because they used to kind of the old way of, of TV advertising. That's basically brand advertising for, for a lot of these uh, brands. And that takes a long time to do. You do it a lot of times through, through agencies. Um, and and uh, it, it, it's, a, it's more difficult, it takes a long time, but it is yes, to answer your question, yes, they are interested. And they pay well for, for eyeballs. So if you have, if you're big enough, like, like say Machine Zone, then you can make a direct deal with Coca-Cola, you can make a de direct deal with others, and, and that way you can make a lot of money. Um, if you do it otherwise, through networks like us, that's, I mean, you can also serve uh, brand advertising, but it just, it just takes a bit longer. Thanks. Sure. How the game developers does make money exactly? For example, we have a huge uh, game which uh, is it, which it takes uh, years to make. For example, Need for Speed, a random auto game, and all the revenue is only from the ads. So the question is how. How, is that how much money you can make with ads, or is it? Uh, is it? Yes, yes. I mean, in terms of, of monetization with ads, it really differs between different games, right? If you look at Clash of Clans, they don't have any advertising; they only make money with in-app purchases. That's their strategy, right? Other games have 50-50. And others have only advertising as the, the way to make money. It really depends on what type of game you have and what type of strategy you have. It, one reason that Supercell would never show advertising in Clash of Clans is that they don't want users to leave the game. They don't want it to go to any other games. You know, they know they make a lot of money, they want, to, you know, they, they, they want to keep their users. That's the most important thing. Whereas for other game developers, it could be more important to they need to make money quickly or they need to make money on all users that download the game. Not just the buyers, but all users. Um, and if you have a very, very casual title where people are not really, there's not so much in there to buy, to pay for, then ads could be the only way to make money. Um, and if you look at like the older titles uh, and the ones that have been there forever, um, a lot of times they, they may they may start out with ad advertising and then, and then when, when they, 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 the user base kind of dwindles and you get only the hardcore players in there, then they may actually switch to only purchases because the hardcore players are more prone to pay for things, right? So it's really, I mean, some, some companies make millions and millions of advertising and some companies choose not to. It just really, really depends. I don't know if that answers your questions really well. It's, uh, Yeah, I, I can't share that, unfortunately. I mean, that's, for lo a lot of these partners, it's, that's, that's confidential. It's part of the strategy, right? How much does it cost to make a game like Need for Speed for mobile phone or some other game for yeah. mobile phone, which is on the top on Google Play? 
Well, that's a great question. I mean, just making a game like that, f first of all, a high quality game with great graphics, great sound, and, and maybe great IP, then you have to buy the IP, right? Yeah, it, I mean, yeah. Well, it was, it, it's hard to say, but we're talking millions, right? And then if you want to get on the top of the app stores, not only do you have to have a great game, and you have to have a game preferably that people want to look for by themselves in the app store, so you get free organic downloads, but you also almost always have to buy advertising, and lots of it, millions. So, I mean, if you want to get a producer game and put it on top of the app store, I'm, I'm just guessing now, but we're talking tens of millions, at least. Unless you want to go for like one specific market and be the top there. <laughs> That's why you come to us, we're wizards. Uh, so the question was, uh, then how do you make money on advertising? It's magic. Um, no, it's not. It's just numbers. It's a numbers game. Um, I mean, it's, if you look at, let's say, this format, it's a very standard format. It pays around $3 for a thousand impressions in the US. So you have a million downloads, and let's say that you show then, you know, for every download you show 10 impressions, right? Which means that you show 10 million impressions. So that's 10,000 times 3, that's 30,000 maybe per day. Um, and, you know, and, and then you do that over the year. Uh, what is that? A mi 10 million? A million? Um, anyway, it's, it, it is a numbers game. You know, it's, it's possible to make, and especially if you start moving up the scale and start showing this type of video, this, this type of ads, right? These type of ads would pay between five and ten dollars or euros for a thousand impressions. So, or even more. If, you're, if you have a casino app, for instance, they pay way more than that. Because those users are highly, highly valuable. There you can make, you know, you can make thirty, forty dollars or even more in some markets for showing an ad to two thousand people, right? So it is, but I mean, again, if you have an app though, and you want to put it at top 10 in the app store, and you only do advertising, it will be difficult to make that work in the short term. But then your strategy is also that, okay, I want to put it at top 10, because if it's top 10, it's going to come on the, t on, the, on the top list, right? Which means I get a shitload of free installs, right? So that's part of your user acquisition strategy. And then you get a lot of, then, then you know, it grows by itself a bit. <coughs> And then you monetize it over long term. And in the end, let's say, you know, after half a year or, or even two months or something like that, then, then you make your money back. But if you, if you actually go in and your strategy is to put it on the top 10 of the app store and you only monetize with ads, it will be very difficult to make that money back. But that's also because the app store is highly saturated. I mean, if you look at the, the, the top 10 of the app store, they haven't really changed very much in the last two, three or two years, actually. So if you compare year on year, I think 8 out of 10 are still the same in the top. So it's very expensive. That's why it makes it so expensive to get there. And it's only the big companies, you know, the, the mini clips, the, the supercells, the, uh, the machine zones. Those are the ones that, you know, have the muscle to kind of, and brand recognition to kind of get in there. And if you're a smaller developer, I wouldn't do that at all. I would try to get other ways to, to, do, to, to get the game, right? I mean, still use advertising, that's fine. There's no channels for it. But, you know, yeah, getting to the top of the App Store is, is really expensive. But that's also a different story. And it's, 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 it's not easy to get those, that money back. But to summarize, uh, just one second, it's a numbers game. If you have a lot of eyeballs, if you have good, uh, uh, valuable users in your game, you will make a lot of money with advertising. Please. Uh, how do you see the future of ad blocking trend? Will it change ad monetization in the future? So the question is, how do you see ad blocking? Will it change ad monetization in the future? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be a bit more specific. No, the thing is that the ad blocking has always been there. It's always been on the web, for instance. So I think the best comparison is, is to look at the web. You know, because you can, you can block any ads on the web easily. And now Apple has, has introduced ad blocking also, you know, on Safari, right, in, the, in mobile. Which means that you can also block ads eventually on, on within native. They can do that. First of all, they don't really have an incentive to do that. Because if they do that, then, you know, maybe 50% of all the game apps in there, in the App Store, are heavily dependent on, on advertising revenue. So basically, you, you, will, you, will, you will wipe them out almost, right? 
which means that they will make a lot, and I'm talking about a lot less money from the App Store, a lot less money. So it's not really in the app's interest to do that, besides user experience maybe, but, but that's also questionable, right? Um, secondly, if you look at experiences from the web, some people do block ads, but 95% don't. And it's also very specific segments. I mean, I know that, you know, if you look at this room, I think ad blocking is more present here, right? But if I talk to my mother, for instance, who is 70, um, she wouldn't know how to do it, and she doesn't really care. She sees some banners here and there, it's like, fine, let, let be. So there, the, the, the ad blocking percentage is like minimal, almost. So if we just look at the experience from the web, it doesn't affect advertising very much. And secondly, it will be really, really against the interest of Google and Apple to have ad blocking in, in the app stores for their own sake. They both have an ad network. They both had an ad network, yes, exactly. And I mean, Google's bread and butter is advertising. Yes. So the question is, if I have specific numbers on how many people in regions are using ad blocks, uh, blockers? No, I don't. I don't. I don't. It's not. Uh, I mean, I've been on a few calls, industry calls on this, where you know, ad block professionals share their, their views and numbers. Um, so I mean, it's something that I could I could dig out. But but the essence of it is, we're an ad company. If everyone would block their ads, we would we would go out of business. Um, we are not worried about ad blocking at all. So I think that's that's as good as I can answer that question. Basically, it's. Uh, it's not important to us. And it's higher in some segments and it's higher in some countries, but it's, uh, it's not gonna affect the industry. I mean, if I'm wrong, I have a different job in two years from now, right? <laughs> so I hope I'm right. Uh, yeah, please. Regarding, uh, regarding different formats, uh, do you see, for example, video ads, they require quite a lot of traffic, of internet traffic. And do you see different uh, ECPNs, for, for example, uh, just simple banners or simple interstitials working better in countries where internet is really limited? Like India, they're, you know, they're really sensitive about font yeah. file sizes. So what about video and sizes? Yes, I mean, first of all, we, we, we prefetch this. I mean, when you, when you download the game, basically you, you, you get the ads already on the phone. Which means that you know they, they, uh, they, they won't be in the latency anyway. But I agree with you. In some countries, in some countries, you don't want that even to happen, right? So yes, it, it affects it affects the monetization not because of latency, but because they don't want to download the app when it's too big, basically in some countries. But um, if you look at mobile marketing right now, though, it's 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 not even 80/20 in terms of like tier one countries versus tier three. It's like 95.5. I mean, you make all your most all your money. If you have a normal distribution of your da of your game, you make 95% money in tier one and tier two countries, <coughs> where it's not such a big problem. Um, so, it, it is it is an issue, but it's not a big issue, uh, unless you really focus on India or other countries like that. If you are focused on that, yes, then think about ad ad monetization uh, maybe differently slightly. Well, okay, the question is about Unity uh, ads, if it's, you know, for advertising or, or just a reason to use uh, Unity software. And again, there's a competitor, so I'll tell you what I think about it, and take it for what it is. Uh, Unity is, is a very big platform for mobile games, and, and I think if I want to advertise them, the, the, the good thing about it is that you can, you can make one code right, and then you can have it on the, on the app store, basically. Uh, and Unity ads is pretty easy to switch on. Those are the advantages. Um, no, they use Unity ads to make money. That's the reason they have Unity ads. Because they don't make that much money from the platform itself. It's a SaaS model. It never really makes a lot of money. Um, they make money. Th so, and, uh, so they, I mean, however, if you have a good, solid advertising platform with high SDK penetration, like we do and like Unity does, then you make a lot of money. So they have Unity ads 
to make money. That's it. Uh, okay, we are we are running out of time. So one last question, <laughs> or we can thank we can thank uh, John. Thank you very much. Nice guys.